Temple University. This is Profiles in Literature, featuring interviews with authors and illustrators prominent in American literature for children. The moderator for this series is Dr. Jacqueline N. Schachter, Professor of Children's Literature with Temple University. Welcome to Profiles in Literature. Today's guests are Miss Tana Hoban, photographer and pioneer of wordless concept books for children, and her editor, Mrs. Susan Hirschman of Green Willow Books, the division of William Morrow Company. Have you always lived in the greater Philadelphia area? Well, I was born in Lansdale, but I have lived here for the past 35 years. Good. Right in Center City. And thank you very much for traveling the way from New York to be with us. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Joining in discussion of Miss Hoban's books is Mrs. Carolyn Field, coordinator of the Office on Work with Children of the Free Library of Philadelphia, my collaborator on the Profiles in Literature series. Ms. Hoban has won more than a dozen gold medals for her work as a photographer, filmmaker, and television commercial consultant. Let's appreciate her work as a photographer, as a filmmaker first, by seeing her short film, Catsup, now in the permanent collection of the New York Museum of Modern Art and available for others through her. And what prompted you to do that film? Well, I guess I, I wanted to uh, do a film, and that seemed like an easy thing to do. We had all these cats in the building, and since I'm a still photographer and I had done a lot of advertising, we had this white no scene paper, and I had never seen any film done that quite that way against white. 
and uh, so that seemed the most expeditious. You know, you didn't have to have model fees. You didn't have to put makeup on the talent. And so uh, that's how it came about. You even have this available with several others in about a seven yeah, and a, a half minute, seven minute, yeah, seven so minute package that's sort of, distributed, yeah. of three films. Um, your film has child appeal, but so do your books, as we'll note in some sample slides. As we see these slides, please feel free to uh -oh. comment. The first slide we'll show is from your book, Shapes and Things, your first book. Yes. Uh, Shapes and Things is a book of photograms, uh, which is uh, basically a photograph, a photogram of a photograph without a camera. Uh, the object, these are all objects that were placed right on the paper. In the book, they're actual size, and they're exposed just the way you would expose a negative, and then developed um, so that uh, they're very, what, accurate, I guess. <laughs> uh, then I, I did visit a school where, uh, a school of 500 children in Wilmington, where, to surprise me, they had each child in the school made a photogram and the teachers and all the pictures were mounted and put on the wall um, so that by the time I arrived to speak everybody in the school had experienced my book which I thought was uh, a very exciting thing to do. Yes, certainly was. The next photos we have are from your 1971 American Library Association notable book. The book, Look Again, has an unusual format. First, there is a peephole page, which we can see now, which prompts guessing about the larger picture on the page beyond. Well, the first page has a hole in it, so it reveals just part of the picture under it. Then you turn the page and you see the rest of the picture. Then you turn the page again and you see another view or in some cases it's almost a filmic device, like a pullback. Um, the book was called Come Close at first, but then when the editors and I looked at it and turned the pages and saw that the hole in the page worked again, uh, we decided to call it Look Again. You see, this is the reverse. Uh, the final peephole as it's turned over the dorsal view. Uh, did you plan the final people when you were originally conceiving the it book? It was first, uh, it first happened as an accident. And then when I saw that it had happened, then I made it happen. The only place it doesn't work is the second to the last picture that uh, the publishers changed the pictures without my knowledge and it didn't work. I could have made it work. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> I understand. That is. Are you a little pleased to know that some of your readers, inspired by you, have made their own peephole booklets? A lot, yes. A lot of children do it. They uh -huh. do it. The teachers do it uh -huh. with the children and, and uh, children send them to me. It's really quite nice. And then this, uh, the counting book, Yes, well, the next book we wanted to talk about is your 1972 American Library Association notable book, Count and See. Yes, this is from the number two, illustrating number two. Um, the book started with, the, the picture that gave me the idea to do the book was a book of five trash cans in a neat row on a beautiful sunny day. I walked out of the house to just go around and see what I could photograph, and I saw this neat row of trash cans. I thought one, two, three, four, five, and I immediately started to count everything in sight. And that's what turned me on to that book. Well, we now have the number 100. And on the opposite page from this is the illustration for 100. Our Count and See and Look Again, your most widely sold books? I think they are probably the most popular, although it does fluctuate, you know, sometimes. They switch. The, we have photos now from circles, triangles, and squares, which won honorable mention from the New York Academy of Science. Tell us briefly about the subject matter in the photos. Well, this, this was a shot taken while I was waiting for the ferry to go to Martha's Vineyard. And the Academy of Science considered a book on mathematics, which I didn't really know I was doing, which thrilled me. And this is a shot, you know, many shots I find 
uh, I don't think them up, they just happen. And if I'm quick enough to recognize it, uh, then I shoot it. I always carry a camera with me for things like that. It's something that could have been planned, but wouldn't have worked out as well. This one is a uh, shot that was planned and shot deliberately and shot several times until I got the right look to it. I think I started with larger shapes. I started with maybe less or more, but uh, worked, worked on it. And this is a shot that um, I took in London. I thought it was such a perfect catalog of shapes that uh, I kind of shot it and saved it. You were very fortunate in that one. Yes. In Push, Pull, Empty, Full, you've shown on facing pages opposites. We'll see if we can note a part and its mate, which will be together. Yes, this is a book that I thought of on the train going from Philadelphia to New York, which I do several times a week. And I thought of the title. I usually start with the title. And I thought of push, pull, empty, full. I don't know what made me think of it. And then I immediately made a list of opposites. And of course, some of them didn't work as well photographically as others. I shot many more than I needed and, and then just selected what I needed. In Over, Under, and Through, you developed spatial concepts and some prepositions. This is a shot uh, taken in the window on my street. Um, most of my books are done really in the vicinity where I live, right, you know, three or four block area, and then the zoo. But mainly all around me, because I am right in the heart of the city, I'm near a firehouse, I'm near uh, street lights and pavements and trash cans, all these things. And uh, one time I had heard of this Bank Street experiment where these children who lived in the city were asked, what did you see on the way to school? And they all said, well, nothing. And uh, then when they were given cameras, they suddenly discovered that they had passed a river and buildings were going up and they had fruit stores. And it just seemed to open their eyes. And I didn't consciously say, well, now I'll do a book about the city. But I think that must have stuck in my mind. And so I began to look at the city closer and to see what I could find interesting, you know, that had appeared to me, you know, quite ordinary and dull before but it really opened up a whole new world. I think we have another picture from that same book of strawberries in a container. Yes, this is from... Uh, uh, over, Under, and Through, isn't it? Right, and it was uh, shot on my front steps. That's, I sh use my front steps a lot, and then in the backyard I have a slate table that I use a lot because they're quite neutral backgrounds. We have one book that certainly doesn't have an urban setting, and that's, where is it, about a rabbit? This is my first story, and uh, I wrote the words to the pictures. I just shot a lot of pictures of a rabbit in the country, and I don't know why. I, d I like animals. I'm working on an animal book now. And I was just fascinated with uh, the rabbit and the shape it made, and uh, that's how that what came about. In The Wonder of Hands, you illustrated a poem by Edith Bauer with some very sensitive photographs. What percentage of them are candid? Well, I would say most of them really um, are not candid in the true sense of the word. Uh, they might have a candid quality, but the people were placed there for the purpose <laughs> of illustrating the words. Some of them, a few of them came from my files. I keep a large file of pictures because I shoot all the time. You know, kind of busman's holiday. <laughs> but uh, I would say most of them were done to the pictures, to the words. There, that's our last picture from The Wonder of Hands. Uh, all of your photographs in your books are in black and white. Do you strongly prefer this? Uh, no, I would like to do a book in color sometimes, but color photographs are, are very expensive to reproduce, I'm told, by the editors. <laughs> but uh, I do like black and white because of the strong graphic image. When I do my books for children, I want to make a very strong impression on their memory tape that mm -hmm. they can kind of pull out at a later date. And so I, I try to keep very simple, strong shapes. We have been introduced to your books, 
to one of your films. And now we will see the beginning of one of your sound film strips for Scholastic, one of 10, that you did the photographs for. And these all develop initial concepts. Everyone's got a body with arms and legs and head. What do you think these things are for? The hippopotamus head. Every arm has hands with fingers on the end. What do you think these things are for? The puppy asked his friend. Every leg has knees that bend with feet and toes below. What do you think these things are for? The penguin wants to know. Every head has eyes and ears and nose and mouth and hair. I know what these things are for. The rabbit told the bear. Every mouth has lips and teeth and a tongue to ask for more. Without my mouth I couldn't speak and tell you what they're for. From the series beginning concepts, Scholastic presents... Ears, nose, fingers, toes. A film strip about parts of the body. Everyone's got a body with arms and legs and head. What do you think these things are for, the hippopotamus said. The head's on top. It can notice things and think about them and remember. Where's your other glove? I can't remember. Well, think. I can't. My hand's too cold. You don't think with your hand. Tell us about any other film strips you're working on. Oh, I just finished uh, 10 film strips on people at work, and one of the strips will be about me as a photographer, and then I will be doing 10 on science, also for Scholastic. Oh, fine. Mrs. Hirschman, tell us about your work with Miss Hoban as her editor. Well, the day she came in was very exciting because we'd been wishing that we could do a uh, a photograph book in which the pictures would be photographs because any other kind of graphic art would have been wrong. And we didn't know what to do about it, where to go to look for it, and in walked Tana with the photogram book and the makings of Look Again. And uh, we were made for each other. It seemed to me that she was onto something that no one else had done in picture books before, because really and truly, None of her books could be illustrated and be what they are with uh, drawn illustrations. The camera is a graphic tool in her hand, and I think uh, she accomplishes what she sets out to do magnificently. Susan, you're considered one of the top children's editors, and you've been an editor quite a while. Uh, could you tell us how you got into the field? Because people are always asking, how do you get to be a children's editor? I think you're interested. That's how I got in. Uh, I'd always thought that I would like to work in publishing. I had no idea what it meant. And my senior year at college, the editor of the Hornbook magazine came and read us some picture books. You must have gone into school in Boston, did you? Outside of Boston. Mm -hmm. And uh, she read Bears by Ruth Krauss, in which every, there are, I think, 17 words in the book, and 15 of them are bears. And I thought, any field that pays you for working on this kind <laughs> of uh, a book is for me. So I went to speed writing, learned to type, learned to take shorthand, and got a job in, a children, in the Knopf Children's Book Department. Now you got a job as a secretary? Mm -hmm. And then what did you do? How, then what's the next step? Well, while I was, sec I was secretary to the editor in the morning and the promotion director in the afternoon. Oh and in between, they let me uh, write some flap copy and they let me read manuscripts. And I stayed for a year and learned an awful lot. And my second job, I got a job as reader at Harper. And I read unsolicited manuscripts for a year. I saw the people who came in with their portfolios and dummies. And after a year, I became editorial assistant, and then assistant editor, and associate editor, and managing editor. And after 10 years, I left, and, uh, and then I was offered the job at Macmillan as head of the department. In other words, you really kept your eyes and ears open because you were interested and learned a lot from watching. Well, I didn't know I was doing that. I mean, I thought I was doing my job. But this is I one way to do it. But as for getting started, the mm -hmm. people who want to start, I think really 90% of it is uh, having an interest in the field and knowing how to type. 
And you, oh, well, you have to know how to type. I <laughs> type all important. the time. You, you can't work in publishing, I think, without knowing how to type. But I'm thrilled if somebody comes in to uh, apply for a job for me, from me, who's interested in children's books, who's not just looking for a job mm -hmm. to make some money. And I, I much prefer somebody who, who cares about children's books. Well, thinking about uh, the photographic uh, picture book, do you have the final say? Do you make the decision or do you confer with your art editor? Uh, does the art editor come into this at all or do you do it all yourself? Well, Tana and I have been very lucky in having as art director at Macmillan and now at Green Willow, Ava Weiss, who's oh, probably yes. one know. of the very best people in her field. And the three of us work very closely. Mm -hmm. And we all fight very hard. And of course, Tana wins any fight because the book is hers but not until Ava and I have really had at her if we feel strongly. And we don't fight very much. We, we work well together. And each of us brings, uh, I think, a separate talent and a separate knowledge. And we're all striving for exactly the same thing, the book that Tana had in her mind and how best to get it between covers and on paper. Mm -hmm. Tana, I'm an amateur photographer. Uh, what kind of a camera do you have? Do you have an expensive camera? I do. I have a Top Con. Uh, with a through-the-lens meter and a uh, motor, so I can shoot fast, and uh, I, I do like it very much. Well, what, what's your background as a photographer? Did, where did you go to school, and how did you learn to do this beautiful, beautiful photography? And by the way, uh, I love cats. Uh, <gasps> love that. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. I went to Moore uh, College Moore. of Art. <clears throat> then it wasn't called a college. It was just a school of design for women. and. Uh, they had, that was the first semester of photography. So that was just the very introduction to it. And then I just learned by doing. And I think to do, learn uh, photography, you have to shoot a lot. You can get all the theory in the world, but you have to take a lot of pictures, which I do. I shoot constantly in color, black and white, all the time. Well, do you think you, you have to learn how to do the uh, processing yourself, too, to, to really do a good job as a photographer? Well, it, I think it depends on your interest. You, there are many good labs, uh, but if you like working in the dark room, you like that end of it, then I think it's, it's very good. I do my own printing. Uh, now I do send the film, and uh, for just the first proofs, I send that to a lab, just because I want to see it very fast, and I don't have the patience to. I have infinite patience. In shooting, I can stand for hours waiting for the rabbit to turn or the child to turn or some insect to land on a leaf, but uh, I don't like to just develop the film in the dark room. Well, now, how did you decide to do a book? I can see a photographer and using your pictures for uh, articles, but to do a children's book, whatever gave you that idea? How did you dare go into Susan with this well, I had material? Well, uh, you'd already done one. Yes, I had always, well, I had been a photographer for years doing advertising, doing ads, beautiful children, blonde, blue-eyed, dressed very specially, oh. uh, eating camel soup or uh, <laughs> wearing the right clothes or on magazine covers. And I'd always wanted to do a beautiful book. And I thought, well, who will I get to, I knew all these great designers, who will I get to design and who will I get to write it and all that. And I think a lot of things happen when the time is right. And uh, so finally I just kind of got this whole ideal at once. And I went, actually I went to Susan with the rabbit book and uh, she didn't like it right off. You mean, she said, where is it? Yes, it wasn't in that shape at first. Oh. But uh, she said, well, um, you have a good idea. Why don't you come back next week with another idea? What time do you want to come? So I came back the next week. And she said, well, you're getting closer. <laughs> And uh, she said, uh, what time do you want to come next week? And instead of saying, come sometime, call me up sometime. Mm -hmm. So I went home and I worked day and night and I did three books in three weeks. And then when I came in the third time, she bought, she bought uh, Look Again and Shapes and Things the same day. So then I was on my way and I thought, it seemed to me as Shapes and Things, I was so afraid that somebody would think of doing that, that I worked day and night to get it as fast as I could, I was sure somebody would come out with it. You know, it didn't seem like that big an idea at first. <laughs> Susan, what are you going to say about that? Well, it fascinates me because the first thing that she did bring was the basis for what is now such a successful and obvious uh, book, The Rabbit Book. But what she'd done, she had all the pictures, but she'd pushed them into a very contrived shape around a story that meant absolutely nothing to her. It was a well-written story by a talented writer. Uh, 
and there was no emotional content in the pictures at all because they were just slotted into this story that didn't come out of her and what she did in the photogram book and look again that was so exciting to me was fill them with emotional content photogram photograph whatever and and here was this rabbit book that really didn't get anywhere and for every time I saw her over the next three years she'd say what about the rabbit book and I'd say wait it will come and one day she brought all the pictures in and you had the beginning of right. the text that this time finally had had a basis in her it, it she had something finally to say about the rabbit pictures and she spread them all over my floor and wrote I think the first three pages yes, right in right. my office and went home and when she came back with that, finally, there was a beginning and a middle and an end and conflict and tension and all the things. She'd had all the pictures and it didn't make a book. Mm -hmm. I think it's fascinating. Well, I, I do have to tell you, though, I have a great niece, two years old, and this is her absolutely mm. favorite book of all the books. Where is it? She looks at it all the time. It yes. works. But yes, I felt Anna. that I owe a great deal to Susan mm -hmm. as my editor because she saw something that I did not see in mm -hmm. myself. I mean, she figured there was a book there, and so I, I felt she must see something. It must be there. I've got to work till I find it. And I think that's what happened, and that's what was such a good combination. I may have gotten around to the book eventually, but I think the fact that I thought, well, she must see something in me. Tell me to come back next week with, with another idea that I just kept on working until it... This is what makes a good editor. She brings things yes. out of you that you Absolutely. don't know can be brought out. Absolutely. I yes. think that's marvelous. Tell me, uh, do you get letters from children or from parents of children? I do. Letters from children, letters from teachers, letters from parents, and I try to answer all of them sooner or later. Well, what age level child would write to you? Because the, you, so many of your books are for the preschool child who can't write. Your preschool to second grade. I don't know whether they help. I get lots of Well, I, many times second. I speak in schools, I speak to older children, too. So they all write and they write. Uh, do they draw pictures and want? Yes. Do they say everything. they want to write a book too? <laughs> Did you all want that. to write a book when you were a child? No. No. <laughs> Never thought. Never of? occurred to me. <laughs> Is the hardest part the conceiving of an idea for the new book? Um, I guess so. It just you know, but I can say, well, I'm going to sit down and think of a book because it doesn't happen that way. In the course of roaming the city or taking pictures or riding the train or sitting in a movie or something, I suddenly get an idea. What's the title of your latest book in print? Uh, oh, the next one out will be Dig, Drill, Dump, Fill, and then I'm, that is finished but not out yet, and the one I'm working on now is uh, one on animals, and that'll be uh, the next one that I'm just starting. Sounds exciting. Uh, thank you very much, Tana Hoban and Susan Hirschman. Ms. Hoban's photographs have appeared in such national magazines as Look, Harper's, and McCall's. Her photos are in the permanent collection of the New York Museum of Modern Art and in such widely celebrated photographic exhibitions as the Family of Man show. She's also the author of two adult books, Photographing Youth and Photograph, How to, how to your Photograph Your That's Child. So how to Photograph Your <laughs> Child and Photographing Youth. We uh, have very much appreciated your appearance here and that of your very supportive, capable editor. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. It was very nice.